Oh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending another episode of our M Smart Investing class, um, our educational program. And uh, with the way the markets have been and continuing our uh, class last week, which was on uh, trading psychology, which was managing your accounts, your emotional management. I, I thought this week we, we go on the strategy side. As we looked at last week on the, on the pie, we noticed the majority of decision-making comes from your trading psychology. 30% is your money management and risk management, and 20% is really the quantitative knowledge and the, the technical knowledge and the strategies. But if you can combine that, that would be the winning strategy. So uh, profitable, actually, um, trades will follow. So today, with the way the markets are, I, I, I thought um, uh, we'll follow on our option strategies as we started in the past, it, as you know, we talked about the purchasing call options on the buying side. And I emphasize if you understand what buying is and what selling is, selling options, buying options, buying, you have no obligation, but you have the right. Selling, you have the obligation, but you collect the premium. So basically, it's the insurance company. Do you want to be the insurance company and the casinos, or do you want to be the consumers and clients? So Today, what I like to do, I want to continue on that and work on a strategy that is really the foundation and mother of every other strategy in options that are. So basically, it's called verticals, vertical spreads or the box spreads. So spreads are the coolest strategy. And once you really get the grasp of it, you will see how it can minimize your risk but also have more probability of success. So in today's episode, I'm gonna mainly work on the, the vertical buy side of things rather than sell. And we will build on that. And I'm gonna give you one specific strategy that you can put in use immediately. And it's pretty specific on vertical spread, which again, it kind of allows you to have more of a predictable outcome. So let's start what is a vertical spread. So vertical spread is basically buying one option and selling another option. One strike, selling another strike. They both have the same uh, expiration month. So they, or if it's weekly, the same weekly expiration. So in the same, they're vertical. That's the reason they use the same um, asset underlying asset, let's say if it's um, NASDAQ 100, spiders, Apple, gold, silver, they use the same one, they use the same month, let's say it's October 16th, that's the expiration, they use the same one, and they use the same series. So if it's called, then both are calls. If it's puts, both are puts. So everything is, again, it's like vertical, so they follow the same guidelines. The only separation is the strike prices. And that's how you kind of can control your profits and losses or your risks. So basically, we usually have um, two biases. I mean, you can say there's a flat market, but sometimes you're bullish, maybe mildly bullish, or we think the markets are going to go down or at least a little bit down. So with that, then that allows you to have four strategies. So the first one is if you're bullish or mildly bullish, then you will buy something called vertical call spread. And when you buy, you basically pay a premium. So like buying a call, in this case, you have the spread. So you will have a debit. Or you can sell vertical put spread. It's almost like, remember, when we were selling puts, we, our plan was that the stock is not going to sell off. It's not going to go to that strike price. You're kind of bullish, or at least you think the market stay flat. So that's what the selling vertical to the spread does, except this one, you actually get credit. So these two strategies are when you are mildly bullish. If you're bearish, then you can do the same thing. Again, remember, when you're bearish, you buy put, putting things down. So in this case, you will buy 
so pay premium for vertical put spread, or you can sell vertical call spread. So basically when we say, just so I use the first one, buying vertical call spread, you're buying one call option and you're sell, selling the higher call option. So how do we make money and what is our risk and what is our um, reward? So the maximum profit that you make is the, the difference between the strike prices. We call them width. And I will give you one example so it will give, make it a little easier. So if the width is $2, that means let's say you bought a strike price of 100 and you sold 102, that's called width. That's the spread. So there's $2. So that's the maximum risk you will have. I mean, maximum profit that you will have. So if the stock goes way above that 100 to 110, the problem or actually the limitations with the spreads are that really your upside potential is limited. So in this case, whatever the width is, that's the maximum that the growth you will have. So if you did not have the spread, you would just buy a call option infinity is your maximum profit because the stock can go, um, you know, imagine you bought Amazon at 100, you went to 3,500, that's how much potential you have. So the profit will be obviously you paid a premium for this or debit, the net cost of spread, and that's the difference between this will be your maximum profit. Maximum loss works the same as, let's say when you bought a call, the premium that you paid that's the most you will lose. The same thing here, the, the cost of the spread, the debit is your maximum loss. So let's work on a, a, an example of buying a vertical spread. And basically what it is in this situation, let's say you bought a $50 call on a, a, you know, ABC stock, but you said, well, you know, I don't wanna take too much risk, it's expensive. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna finance this and I'm gonna sell a call which is higher than my buy call and I will um, pay $1 because I collected premium for the 55, I paid for 50, so it's gonna cost me $1. So in reality, you bought a $50 call and you sold a $55 call and basically financed this. Now, the risk of maximum loss, as you know, again, because you don't have, that's all you, you paid, that's $1, that's your maximum loss, so it's $1. The break even will be if the stock goes to $51, anything above that, then you're making profit. So up to $55, you're gonna be in the money. So the maximum profit will be uh, the width, which is at 55 minus 50, that $5, that's your profit, minus $1 that you paid. So you can pocket $4. So in this situation, $4 is your maximum profit. So this is a pretty nice four to one um, reward to risk or risk to reward is one to four. And that's why it makes these vertical spreads attractive. Now, one of the things is, remember we had the four strategies, believe it or not, one of the things I love about options are pretty much mathematically, uh, ha have a mathematical foundation. So. In reality, if I did the exact same thing about to buy the vertical call spread or I sold the vertical put spread, the outcomes are the same. The risks are the same, it's a dollar, the profits are the same. So it's very interesting that you can actually work on this and, um, and have the similar um, actually outcome. But today we're gonna just basically work on the buying because it's a lot easier to work on the debit side than the credit when you sell it. Again, I emphasize with the with vertical call, once you understand the, the, the concept of spreads, you understand how the verticals work, then you can have uh, um, numerous number of strategies that allows you to be creative. You can have calendar spreads, you can have back ratio spread, you can do iron butterflies, you can do iron condors, you can have broken wing flies. So these are all really exotic names. You can do so many, you can do colors. And, but the whole foundation is basically on vertical spreads. If you understand this, everything else is easy. 
So when I say like Iron, it sounds like, oh my God, what is, that's such a, you know, fancy name. Iron means you basically have call and put, that's all. So there's the two of them in there. And when we say like butterfly, you know, to think of butterfly, very creative, that means they have wings. So there's like two outside. So basically there's different things, but once you understand the vertical spreads, I think you will appreciate the, 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 the plans and the strategies that you can follow and you can be very creative with that. So tonight, what I thought, I'm gonna work on one specific strategy on vertical spreads. It's called in the money, out of the money, vertical spreads. It's hopefully simple to understand and you can uh, put in use immediately. So in order to do that, and in order to un actually understand, understand the, um, you know, how the spread work, how the actually call options are, I think we've talked about Greeks in the past, what affects the price of the options. One of the most important things with the, especially in the spreads, is the time decade. You have to understand, because remember, part of your, again, strategy was selling an option. So when you buy an option, they all depend on time decay. And as you know, the last 30 days, the, the time, because we're getting closer and closer to expiration, obviously the premium in that case, because of the decade, it plays a bigger role and bigger role now because we are getting to the, fa the finality and we're getting to the end. So in this case, when you buy an option, then you will see, and I will show you at the end how you can see the theta is negative. That means every day that goes by, that's how much money you lose. So if the theta says negative zero two, that means you're losing two cents, keeping everything else the same level. The volatility, the price of the stock, everything is the same. Because of the time decay, you will lose the options. That's why when you sell an option, it's an advantage to you because it's going down and you end up keeping your money. We use like, let's say you have a covered call. It's, you use a covered call because you sold the option against your holding. Then as the time passes by, it is your friend. But if you are a buyer of an option, then it's really that it becomes your enemy, especially as getting closer past 30 days. Now, one thing I wanna share with you, this is my rule number one, is the rule of square roots. So basically, if you have like a three month option, if the option for one month, the, the take a value of that option was like $1, let's say we paid $1 for this option, what happens is that doesn't mean if it's like three months, it will be $3, or if it's two months, it's $2. The longer that the option time is, actually the less of an effect of theta in the longer term. So what I mean by that is there's something called the rule of square root. So if you go out two months, option for two months, the, if for one month was a dollar, for two months will be square root of the two. So in reality, it will be square root of two is at 141. So the same options value will be only $1.41, not $2. If you went three months, what will happen at that time is the square root of three, which is 1.73. So the, the value of the option based on the time is $1.73. So it's not three times, it's not two times. It's basically, it shows you, that's why it's important to, when you're selling options, that it's important to understand that that's why the past 30 days are where the theta becomes more and more effective. So the longer you go, and this will help you to understand in the future when we talk about, let's say calendar spreads, how you can take advantage of this theta decay, knowing that if I sell the shorter term, it will be more decay on my, or the loss of the theta, or the time side of the time value of the options on the near month and less on the longer month. So if you're a longer holder, the theta doesn't affect you, but when you're a short seller, it affects you a lot more. So that's what we want.
I hope this is clear because it's important to understand the value of theta. The second thing you have to understand is the vega, which is the implied volatility sensitivity. And in this case, obviously, if you own a long position and if the volatility increases, that actually increases the value of the option. So there's a positive relationship. On the other hand, if the value of vega goes down, then your option price will go down. So our job is to basically manage the volatility and theta. And those are the things that affect the price of our options besides the price of the stock, as you know. So these are the, these are the very important ones. The third thing I want to understand is the, the probability of expiring. And that's why you know, your option pain, you can actually see that nowadays it has become you know, all the um, platforms, they offer you that. And it's important to understand what is the chance of each option contract to become in the money. And when we say in the money, it's like by one penny at the expiration. So let's say it's October 16th and you bought a $50 option it's a call option, just purely forget about vertical. Just a, if that option goes to 50, an expiration is at $50 and one cents or more, you're actually in the money, which you have to be watchful for that because that could be exercised. What this probability tells you is what option market makers have based on all the numbers that they put in, based on everything else, they feel that this stock or the underlying asset will be in the money at the time of expiration. And that's what it's important to understand. So you, obviously you wanna understand that so you see what is the odds. You can also look at the delta. Delta also gives you the probability, but there is a place that shows you the probability of in the money and or out of money, either one you can uh, complement each other. So you can use that. So understand your probability. So. What does this in the money, out of money vertical spread mean? Basically, what you can see is if we have a stock, when you look at the option pane, you have a at the money, which is right very close to where the stock price is. So for call options point of view, if the prices are lower than at the money, then we are in the money because if a, you buy a call option of let's say 45 for a $50, stock, you already gained that $50. So that is in the money. Out of money is, which is, so you will see a gray area and then you see darker area. So basically at the money is the breaking point. In the money is the gray area you have, you are ahead of, you already have gains. Out of money is when it's like you're not there yet. You're hoping to get there maybe when you buy a call option. So it's the future increase that's what you're looking at so within the money out of money vertical spread what you're trying to do you want to get buy something one you buy the plan of let's say one in the money and you sell out of the money and you want to have your risk one to one and i'll explain how that works by doing this which is the same spread the same expiration what you're doing, you are kind of upsetting the vega and theta risk because what happens is, and you will see, and again in examples, that because they are very close, they're in the similar months, they're um, similar underlying uh, assets, you basically get negated. So in reality, you are really, if you're mildly bullish or bullish strategy, this is about, in, in this case, I'm going to use. Uh, you basically buying uh, vertical spread. If you're mildly bullish or bullish, you buy the call vertical spread in and out of money. If you're negative, then you can do exact same thing and buy the put uh, in the money out of the money. So the idea works exactly the same. So, so if you're bullish, you buy a call spread. If you're bearish, then you buy a, a put spread. So this is based on your directional bias. So, so how does that work? So basically we are buying a debit spread. We buy in the money, which is the ITM, and we're selling out of the money. So what kind of a width of the spread? So 
let's say we have a $50 stocks. I just use that. So basically, if you want to go one-to-one -one risk, then you use a with of two. So you bought a $49 call and you sell $51 call. So it's $50. The width is two. So you just two is like 49 and 50. So you buy the 49 and sell the 51. That's the simplest way you can see how that works. So some of the things that you have to remember is try, this is my rule number four probably, but I think that's the right one. Choose a minimum $2 wide. Don't go less than that because there are some stocks that go half, you know, 50 cents. But try to use $2 so it becomes a one-to-one -one risk. If you pay $1 for your debit, you're, you want to make sure you make $1 on your profit. But don't go more than $5. So when you play stocks, let's say like Amazon's or you play Google's or you play even, I don't know about Tesla's or so wide everywhere, but when they're higher stocks, try to make it, don't go more than $5, which means 250 each side. So the width has to be $5. So anything over $5, then you're exceeding, you know, as far as, again, this is all about probabilities. Um, we can use these larger spreads, let's say when we play R and condos, but for this specific strategy, let's just stick with between $2 and $5. The underlying, this is very important. Whatever you choose, there, uh, as you know, there are thousands of stocks with options or assets with options. Make sure it is liquid, rule number five. Liquidity, liquidity, liquidity because you, what you want to do, you want to minimize the, the cost. So basically you want to make sure there's a low bid and ask spread. And because of that, you want to make sure there's a high open interest, which will help. And some of the things you could also look at, a lot of weekly options are more liquid. Not every single weekly option is liquid, but when you're screening, so you can start with weekly options, then you look at Again, top maybe 100, 125 stocks or ETFs. I, that's the reason I just didn't put, I talk about underlying um, investments is doesn't have to be just stocks. It could be, I mean, if you want to go to commodities and other things, you could also do that. But this is specifically, again, just not for stocks, but you can use a lot of liquid ETFs out there. So now how about the time horizon? Now you are very flexible because of the, offsetting theta and gamma, you can be pretty flexible. What we found out is that this time horizon works the best within nine days and 50 days. So one of the things uh, just, uh, you know, over the years, I've been fortunate again, I'm doing this for about 35 years, uh, you find so many great traders. And I think part of the thing is not only being able to be able to do your own trades, but also in a good company, you learn a lot. I mean, when you think about options, you think of Larry McMillan, you know, he's a really grandfather, especially in the, um, um, as far as the strategies goes in the 1980s, he came around. And then, you know, we go to like Tom Sosnoff, who's founder of Thinkorswim, and Ben Kaufman was his educational um, uh, arm. And, and it, you know, John Carter and we talk Fire Hamzy. So there's a lot of different people who give us good effects. So part of our journey is, again, we are opening the doors. So if you ever come across some of their books or some of the ideas, it's easier to understand. So I've been very fortunate. Again, I've, I've seen some of them. I've talked to them quite often. And, and that's where the ideas come. So that's why it's the trial and errors and here we are, we, we got, you know, the idea, like for instance, it's a trial and error, nine days and 50 days. And, you know, a lot of these wonderful teachers have um, also shared those ideas. So um, that's why it's good, again, because of the time decade. And that's why the, I think I, I found that 28 days, 30 days is really attractive for me. So, but you can, you can be flexible. Now, the size of the position, make sure that when you're playing this, try not to go too large, try with small amount, invest the capital that you're comfortable and willing to lose 100% of it. So if it's 
this is like a one dollar so it's a hundred dollars just be comfortable knowing that there's a again the probabilities are on your side but even if there's a 20 percent chance that for whatever reason just be able to accept that so that's the size of the position so a lot of times rather have um lower risk but multiple accounts so you can control that so let's say if your risk is a thousand dollar sometimes you split it to, to work with five contracts with the risk of 200 rather than one contract with the risk of a thousand to hit that home run so um that's that's should be a, a priority for you the risk management now i have a say rule number six probably it's like what execution price we use for the spread now, number one, with this, make sure, because they're liquid anyway, so that's a good thing, but put the mid price and your option pane actually comes with it and it gives you that mid price and uh, try not to go at the bid or the ask, let it go. If it hits, great. If it doesn't, don't worry, be patient. You know, there's another opportunity, another opportunity. So, the, the, the rules are that you want to make sure that you don't pay more than half of the width. And what I mean by that, if you chose a $2 width, we talked about the $50, so it's a $49.51, it's a $2 width, the most you wanna pay, the debit that it shows when you put that, you know, the spread, the mid price, the most or close to it. I mean, today I did have a trade that my trade you know, the most I was supposed to pay was like, I guess $2 and I ended up paying two fifteen. You can do that. If it's like 105, yes, that's okay. Except, but if it's like 125, then your risk return becomes, becomes a little um, lopsided because what happens is you now for a dollar 25 risk, you're getting 75 cents. So just, just be um, uh, wary of that. So, um, that's again, that's another rule for the execution of the price. So I think that rule number seven, I would say is the exit strategy. So how do we exit this, this um, strategy? Basically, number one is don't shoot for home 100%. These are concerns, it's all, it's the repetition, the numbers, the numbers, numbers. So I would say between 50 and 65%, it would be great. So I put my exit. First of all, I put good till cancel. When I, as you know, most of you know that as soon as I put my trade in, my exit or uh, my targets are already in. So in this case, I already know I'm gonna put in like 50 to 60. I, usually, I do love about 60%, depending on the number of contracts. If you do have one, you decide with 60. If you have two or four, as you know, I like the multiple contract. I like to start, you know, maybe I do a 50, a 55, 60, 65, but be happy with that. And there's nothing wrong with making 65% in the next two weeks or three weeks on your account. So make sure you do the GTC. And in this scenario, again, if you purchase a debit spread, which was $2 wide, then put, and you paid $1, just say, well, I wanna be out at 150 or 160 and, um, that's it. Now, the other thing is if there is only four days left, remember you have two legs in that sense. Of what I mean by that is you have one call option of your purchase, the other one is the sell. So you have two. I personally, if you see there's only three or four days, four days till the expiration, consider part or all of your um, positions, no matter what. So you could be profitable, flat, or even have a loss, it just gives you a little peace of mind because it, usually if the things would have moved, they would have moved by uh, by then. So depending on if you use the weekly, so you can get a little closer, but take part of it anyway, depending on the contracts that you have. And if you are in the money, you're unprofitable, then definitely take before expiration. I've emphasized this many times. I know a lot of you, if you use the selling options, you like to let it expire. I like to cover mine a day before or two days before, just in case there was any type of surprises. Again, even when you buy an option, 
you have to remember if you're in the money by one penny that could be exercised so let's say on this is a friday expiration and you bought an option was at 50 it's at 50 dollars and two cents and let's say it's Friday afternoon, you get exercise, Monday comes and there's this bad news comes and the stock drops eight, ten dollars but whatever the news is. So, I mean, it could go the other way too, but again, you are at the mercy of the markets at that time. So it's, you had a specific goal, specific strategy system, just abide by it and cover it. So now if you felt really positive about this and you think well you know i've done well i have i'm um, not when you're losing but you have a break even or done better you can actually roll it so you can say well you know it's october let, let me roll it to november do the same strategy because i have a feel, good feeling and it's like within 10 15 cents and you know with now with no commissions uh, a lot of platforms don't offer any brokers they allow you to move things without paying that's an idea. I'm not a big roller. I like to have um, certainty and I like to have the finality. So I'd like to finalize things and start things all over again. Okay. So with that in mind, that was my seven rules. Let me share a strategy with you, with, which I did actually today. So what I saw, Silva has really, and I, we've talked before last week and I, as I had mentioned about what's happening with gold. I felt gold, if it goes to 1800, 1870 was my support. I said 1800, I will definitely buy. Silver, 22 to 20 area. I think they have much more potential. So what happened was uh, silver, as you can see, finished at 2115. So around 21, what I did personally, um, you know, um, I, I as you can see, I uh, okay. actually I did that, but on this. Right. So basically, what we're doing the calls. What I these are actually my positions from before. Um, I've sold twenty one puts, um, and I actually own twenty two calls. So. I would be happy owning $21 silver, actually. So basically, this is what I want to share with you is silver is at 21. So what you could do, you could say, well, I like to, I feel like I'm a little bullish. We are hitting the, uh, we've already passed the Bollinger Bands. It seems like we're getting very close to the support. It's come a long way. So I'm looking at this $21. So what you could do, you could say, well, I want to have a width of four. So what that means is you can actually, with the width of four, that means I would buy a, a, a call option, which is $2 less than 21, which is 19. And this is the ask. And then I will sell the 23 options, which is about, in this case, is about 38 cents. Now, you could also have another choice, which was you could have actually go the width of three. You can see there's a 50 cents. So you could have actually bought silver option of 19 and a half at 210 and sold the 22 and a half at 49 cents. So you would, you know, put like maybe 50 cents in this case. So as you can see, the, 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 the spreads are very, uh, small, so I mean, you probably would would buy at 209 and sell at 50 cents. So in reality, what it is, you can see the number of open interests. This is a very liquid account. So to just summarize everything, this this is very liquid. There's a lot of open interest. There is very narrow spread. And now, how you can calculate this? You can say, okay, the difference between 23 and 19 is four. So the most I'm gonna pay for this is $2. So basically then you say, okay, if it's 250 here and it's about, I will collect maybe 249 and 39 or 38. The difference is about 210. 
that's acceptable. So two dollars spread, paying two ten, um, you can live with that. Or what you could do the twenty two and a half and nineteen and a half. The obviously difference is three dollars. So the most you want to pay is a dollar fifty. In this scenario, let's say it's two ten minus in this scenario, let's say fifty cents. That's about one sixty or so. It's close enough. So I mean, it's not you know. So that means for a dollar sixty risk, you will probably be a dollar forty. So this is how you can you can um, um, put a trade in. Now, some of the things like you can see, for instance, for the nineteen dollars um, silver call, the probability of in the money in this situation is about. 76 and a half and being out of the money which is the 23 is about 22 percent so that's the odds are in your favor basically tells you that you know there's a good chance that you will be in the money and then now uh, so it, it, it is something that the probabilities are um, pretty good the theta as you can see is two cents and stays two cents. So that's what how you negate that. And that's what the same thing with Vega. Vega is only a penny and two pennies. So again, the volatility also will be negated actually in, in your favor. So what happens is um, you're selling the higher volatility and buying the lower volatility. So in, in, in this case, it's, um, um, Basically, this is an example of how you can um, put this in the money, out of the money in use. You can do that with spiders. You can do that with Apple. And um, basically, that's it. So short and sweet. Um, again, thank you for being with us. This is, I thought, again, once we build that, understand that vertical spread, we will have classes, more classes again the calendar spreads are wonderful. You can also do ratio spreads, you can do more conservative actually, iron condors and butterflies. You can use the, um, the volatilities and learn about the straddles and strangles. And so, but everything, once you understand what is selling the option, what is buying the option, putting them together, having a vertical understanding that, everything else will be much easier. So. With that in mind, I, um, again, I appreciate your attention. I appreciate you being with us. And I look forward to seeing you um, on, hopefully on Saturday. So I'll, um, Sean, thank you. We can actually start with.